All right, ladies and gentlemen, people, let's work through this, please. Step one in this problem, Mac. Help me with my picture. I'm missing something in my picture. Well, what is that force? <coughs> True, so it's an electric force, right? The electric force, we can actually also put one on the positive charge in the middle. So we have the force, the electric force. After we've drawn our free body, free body diagram, Bill, what are we going to do next? Sum the forces. In what direction, Bill, are we going to sum the forces in? <coughs> Indirection. If we sum the forces in the indirection, that's going to be equal to the electric force, which is equal to mass times centripetal acceleration. The equation we're going to use for the electric force is K, Q1, Q2 over R squared. That's equal to mass times the centripetal acceleration, which is the tangential velocity squared divided by the radius class. In your equation for K, Q1, Q2 over R squared, R is not? It is by definition? This is between the center of charge and the two charges. This is especially confusing because sometimes R is? Radius. In this particular case, would you agree that R is the radius? Yes. Everyone brought one over R to the party. Solving for the tangential velocity, so the tangential velocity equals kq1 q2 over mr, the square root of, we have all of this stuff, 8.99 times 10 to the ninth. Both of these charges are the same, 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19, which we can then square, divided by the mass, the mass of what, bless you, Hunter? The per electron. Which yeah, one? Electron. The electron. Because we're summing the forces on the electron, which is moving in the circle. So uh, 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31st multiplied by the radius, which they gave to be 5.29 times 10 to the negative 11, and the whole square root of that whole thing. Yes? Why do they both have the same charge in one thing? Okay, so why do they both have the same charge if one is positive and one is negative? Correct? That's your question. So why is it that we use both the magnitude of both of these charges, we don't plug in the negative for Q. The direction is in the free body diagram. That negative has to do with the direction of the force, but we already have the direction of the force in the free body diagram. We sum the forces in the indirection, in was positive, so we put a positive force electric. So we don't use that uh, the, mag uh, the sign of the charge because we already have the direction. Tangential velocity, please, 2.186 times 10 to the 6. So with sig face, 2.19 times 10 to the 6 meters per second. Part B. This electron, which is moving in a circle around the proton, actually has a current associated with it. We need to figure out what that current is. We have two different equations for current. We have the one with the current density, or I'm sorry, the charge carrier density, and we have the one with dq in it. The one we're going to use this time is dq dt. The reason we're going to use this is because we know the charge, and we have an idea of what the time is. Nick. Every time it goes around once, the charge is going to be the charge on the electron. Because the electron goes around, every time it goes around once, that'll be one charge on the electron. So then we need the period. Uh, let's see, we could do angular velocity equals the change in theta over change in time, or 2 pi divided by the period. Therefore, the period equals uh, 2 pi divided by the angular velocity, but we don't have the angular velocity, we have the tangential velocity, so the tangential velocity equals r times omega, omega equals the tangential velocity divided by the radius, therefore the period equals 2 pi multiplied by the tangential velocity, no, multiplied by the radius divided by the tangential velocity. So we can substitute then in for our current. Current is going to be equal to the charge on the electron divided by 
2 pi r divided by the tangential velocity. Or tangential velocity multiplied by the charge divided by 2 pi times radius. 2.186 times 10 to the sixth multiplied by 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 divided by 2 pi times 5.29 times 10 to the negative 11. So, doesn't like dq over dt like change of charge over time? Yeah. So is it, is it changing? Well, I mean, it's every time it's one, two, three. I mean, it's the same charge, but it keeps going. It keeps so going by. Zero? Is it what zero? Well, like the charge isn't changing. Okay, well, your, your issue is we're talking about you know, which charge, right? So the argument would be if I wait long enough, that particular charge is going to go all the way through this wire and come back, and therefore the net current is zero, right? Are we talking about electrons? Uh, we're still talking about electrons up there. Are we talking about one electron around the edge? Yeah. Is the charge of the electron around the edge? No. But it's still flowing, it's still flowing in a circle around the atom, right? Right. And that's what current is, charge flow. Okay. Right. That's, oh, oh, that's what charge is. Okay. So we get current is equal to, please. Zero, zero, one, zero, five, one, nine, six. That's why you said one, nine? One, nine, yeah. Okay. Uh, so with sig figs, we'll go with uh, one point, we have three, one point, Zero five milliamp. 